Were you hoping to attend the recent workshop on spiritual gifts but couldn't make it? No need to worry. We are hosting another workshop on identifying your spiritual gifts. Join us on Saturday, December 12th from 10 a.m. to 12 noon via Zoom. Dr. Audrey Todd, Director of Educational Ministries, will lead us in this workshop. Gain clarity on how your spiritual gifts impact your personality, your relationships, and your calling. Your spiritual gifts are connected to God's plan and to your purpose. Register for this workshop by going to goodshepherdbaptist.org and click the registration link. After registering, you will receive a confirmation email containing the spiritual gifts assessment. That's Identifying Your Spiritual Gifts, Saturday, December 12th from 10 a.m. to 12 noon on Zoom. The weather is changing and we need your help. Good Shepherd Baptist Church is partnering with Petersburg City Public Schools for their winter clothing drive. All items will benefit identified students and their families who are in need. We are asking all members and friends of our congregation to help by donating brand new winter coats, hats, scarves, and gloves for both children and adults. To participate, please bring your donations to the church by Thursday, December 10th. Items will be collected Monday through Friday between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. If you need additional drop-off times or have any questions, please call the church office at 804-732-5969 and contact Pastor Angel White. Andrew Shannon presents Feeding 5000 Holiday Feast and Community Celebration 12 noon on Saturday, December 12th. Serve to go while supplies last at Good Shepherd Baptist Church, South Crater Road, Petersburg. Bishop Jeffrey Reeves Sr., pastor and host. This outdoor event is free and open to the public. Social distancing and all COVID guidelines will be observed. Presented by Andrew Shannon in partnership with Good Shepherd Baptist Church, the Hope Center of Petersburg, Capital Area Partnership, Uplifting people, Hester Brown, President and CEO, the Virginia State Unit of the SCLC, Barry Davis Enterprises, The Alley, Zeta Phi Beta Sorority, Queensway Soul Cafe and Chickasaw Restaurant. Celebrity servers include elected officials, business and community leaders. Seniors and disabled will get meals delivered to your vehicle. Co-host Reverend Mark Peterson, Dr. Floyd Miles and Andrew Shannon. Music by Rodney Williams and Doc Christian. Call Reverend Mark Peterson, 804-732-5969. What's up, everybody? Praise the Lord. We thank God we have this opportunity to come before you again and uh, share uh, with you the Word of God on another Monday night. I pray that these uh, last few lessons have been a blessing to you as we've been talking about uh, facing uh, the future with confidence. And um, we know that we're living in a time uh, of the unknown. And so, uh, unlike we've ever seen our, in our generation. so. I think it's just important for us to maintain our confidence, to um, not be filled with anxiety. I think um, the circumstances uh, that we're under and in um, would uh, breed anxiety within us if we let it. So uh, we've been talking about uh, confidence and, and, um, and how to face the future with it. So we're going to take a little bit further tonight. Let's bow our heads together in prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, God, for the few moments that we have tonight to share your word. We pray, God, that you will speak through us. We ask, God, that you will give us all the ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. We don't want to be left alone to our own imaginations, but we want to know clearly, oh God, what you are trying to say. So we pray, oh God, for the impartation of the Spirit, Lord, that, that we might hear your voice and know your will. I thank you for this privilege that you have given me to share your word with your people. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Okay, so tonight, um, we're still talking, of course, about facing the future with confidence. And um, I want to talk a little bit about, uh, about building um, our confidence, all right, or how to build confidence. Really what I have done is that I have prepared an acronym, if you will. Uh, I want to talk about the ABCs 
of building um, your confidence, the ABCs of building your confidence. All right, so uh, if you're writing anything down, if you got your Bibles out, your devices out, <clears throat> of course, we remember uh, Philippians 4 and 13, which reminds us that we can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. We can do everything through Christ who gives us the ability. All right. So now we're talking about building confidence tonight. If we're going to face the future with confidence, we have to admit that there are times when we lack confidence or our confidence level is not as high as it were, or as it should be. And um, truth of the matter is, is that we may have confidence in one area or one thing, and we may lack confidence in another area or another thing. And, um, you know, the reality is that the area where we lack confidence is an area where we need confidence. Um, and so we have to learn how to build confidence at times. If you're going to have confidence, confidence in some areas will have to be built. Um, you know, we don't live in a perfect world. Um, you know, all things being relative, you know, again, like I said, you are proficient, you are confident, you are competent in one area, but then there's another necessary need for area in your life where you need confidence. And so you have to learn how to build it. You can't continue to move forward um, having a lack of lack of confidence in an area of your life where confidence is needed. Please turn to First uh, Peter chapter two and verse nine. First Peter chapter two and verse nine clearly says um, that we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for His own possession that you might proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. All right, building confidence. Again, part of it is just about knowing who God says you are. We talked about that um, in the first installment of this uh, Bible study lesson. Uh, who am I? You're, you, and listen, in the eyes of God, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Mind you now, that how God sees us, he sees us um, contextually as a community. He doesn't simply see us individually, all right? So understand that, you know, confidence, and I'll talk about this at the end, um, confidence has a lot to do with our connectedness, all right? Or things that, and the people that we are connected to. So, because that's how God sees us, he sees us in light of not only who we are, but who we are connected to. Someone once said that I can pretty much tell you uh, who you are if you show me who you hang around. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily true um, in every single case, um, but who we hang around does say a lot about us. It doesn't say necessarily, necessarily say everything about us, but it does say a lot about us. So, okay, so, all right, so you and I, we're a chosen race, we're a royal priest, we're a holy nation. We are people for God's own possession, all right? The expectation of God is that we will proclaim the excellency of him through the way we live, amen, uh, through our behaviors, that we will demonstrate uh, and be an example um, before the world um, of who Christ is, all right? Um, the one who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. The one We want to be an example of the, of the one who has shown us the way. And uh, so, again, this is, who, this is who we are. And according to um, um, the scriptures, that we have this capability, um, we have this capacity, we can carry this out, we can carry this through. So you're saying, okay, well, Bishop, I hear that, but I don't know. Well, okay, we're going to talk tonight about building confidence in this area. All right? Remember, it's going to be a short lesson. So remember, I told you it's the ABCs, the ABCs of building our confidence. Number one, write this down if you're writing. In order to build our confidence, we have to, A, listen, acknowledge past influences. Acknowledge past influences. All right? All all. Another way to put it is just to acknowledge our background. 
You gotta understand that our background, our past, um, the things that have influenced us in our past, they can prove either to be a barrier or a benefit to one's confidence. It can go either way, all right? Um, what, what I mean by that is your examples or, or your points of reference, the things that uh, you have been exposed to, the people that you have been exposed to. If, if you have been exposed to people who have consistently demonstrated confidence, um, then it lends to you being able to build confidence in your own life because you have seen it, you have witnessed it, you have experienced it. On the other hand, if you have been exposed only to persons who have consistently demonstrated a lack of confidence, guess what's going to happen? If that, if, that has inf if that influence has taken hold in your life um, and it's the only point of reference, um, there, there, there are times when people underachieve or they approach everything with a lack of confidence because that's all they have ever seen. That's all I've ever been experienced. Um, uh, exposed to, excuse me, and that's all that they have ever experienced it. Turning your Bibles very quickly, if you don't mind, to the book of Proverbs chapter 13. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. I'm going to be reading these passages uh, tonight uh, from the uh, English Standard Version of the Bible. Um, New Living Translation, of course, is great, um, but the English Standard Version is great as well. Um, and so I'll be flipping back and forth um, as the days go forward, the years go on, as it were. I'm using both now. Um, I know I have indoctrinated the church into using, using the New Living Translation of the Bible, but um, there are times where you're going to be uh, reading the text from the English Standard Version. However, all right, let me get back to it. So Proverbs 13, verse 20 says, Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Let me say that again. Whoever walks with the wise will become wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Again, you have to acknowledge past influences. And I'm minding now, you have to acknowledge it. Um, don't, you know, don't pretend that you were not exposed to what you were exposed to, All right? Sometimes, you know, in order for your confidence to be built, you have to just admit the fact, hey, you know what? I have, for whatever reasons, um, I, have, I have been around um, the company of those who didn't have very much confidence, and, and this is all I saw. And so, uh, you know, this is, this is all I could emulate. You know, I emulated the example that I had. And when you find out, when you find out different or when you find out better, don't be ashamed to acknowledge that. It's not, it's not about putting somebody else down that you love and care about. Um, but I want to tell you, child of God, you can do better. Amen. We all can, we all can do better. We can, we can start from where we are and we can build better uh, for ourselves. But you got to admit and acknowledge where you are. All right? And now you can be mad about it, talking about, well, you know, it's not my fault. We're not, we're not trying to pass blame. We're simply saying that you're going to have to acknowledge the influence of your past. You're going to have to acknowledge your background, better or worse, for what it was. And if it is not, right, if it has not been up to par, if it has been filled uh, with uh, examples of people who um, have approached life um, with uh, a lack of self lack of self confidence, and mind you now, those people got their own stories too. Again, it's not passing blame. You just have to admit it, right? And and listen and understand what the verse is saying here in, in uh, Proverbs thirteen twenty. That whenever you walk with the wise, you become wise. Why? Because that's what you're exposed to. All right. So you got to acknowledge the past. Uh, I, I can spend a lot of time on this, but I kind of be beating a dead horse. But I think you've gotten uh, the picture. But here's the second thing. ABC is now building confidence. Number one, acknowledge the past. But number two, you got to break the cycle. Break the cycle. All right? Your past influence is one thing, but your present challenge is another. All right? In order to build confidence, you have to adjust to your present challenges. Now, your, your present challenge may require your confidence. <laughs> 
uh, from you that has yet to be built. That's okay. Because building confidence is about learning how to react. You don't have to revisit, rehearse, come on, uh, uh, the same thing over and over again, all right? You acknowledge, okay, this, this is what I saw, this is what I experienced, but it ain't working. I got to break that cycle, all right? So, so whenever you're faced with something new, whenever you're faced with something different, you have to learn how to react, all right? Listen to what I'm telling you. I don't care where you come from. All of us have had opportunities in our lives where we were presented with a new challenge. Now, if you had no point of reference, I don't know, I don't know what to do with this. I don't like confidence. Some, sometimes we have shied away and we have reneged on the opportunity um, to uh, pursue the prospects of the challenge only because we lack self-confidence. What I'm telling you tonight is that you can build the confidence, all right? You got to build it. If I can say it this way, build it brick by brick by brick, all right? All right, first thing you got to do is listen, and again, it's about adjusting to the present challenge. It's about uh, learning how to react appropriately um, in the moment, so that when you're faced with something new and when you're faced with something different, listen, as I mentioned to you last week, avoid the negative narration. Stop telling yourself I can't do it. Stop saying that it's impossible. Avoid that negative narration. Stop, stop saying that stuff to yourself in your mind. You are filling your mind, amen, with something that is not true. The Bible says that you are, come on, amen, a royal priesthood. The Bible says you are a chosen race. You're the holy nation. Amen. You're God's own possession. You have the ability, the a capacity to proclaim, come on, the excellency, amen, of, of, of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. You can do it. Stop saying that you can. All right? First thing you got to do is avoid a negative narration. Number two, you have to abandon the urge to be arrogant. What, what do I mean by that? In many instances, arrogant people, uh, or once arrogance, let me say it this way, is usually a sign of insecurity and ignorance. There are people who are arrogant because they're ignorant. They don't know, and they're insecure. They don't think they can. Here's the thing, all right? Uh, we, and I see this all the time. Rather than uh, uh, adjust, as it were, to the present challenge, uh, a person will become arrogant because deep inside they feel insecure. Deep inside they know that they are ignorant, currently anyway, about how to handle this child. So they'll, you know, come proud and boastful. And listen, but arrogance is not confidence. Please write that down. Arrogance is, is not even confidence disguised. Arrogance is not confidence at all. Amen. They're to two totally different things. All right? So what I tell you, you got to avoid the negative narration. You have to abandon the urge to be arrogant. And then you got to abolish bad behaviors. Again, um, as I go back for a second, this, this the, the urge to be arrogant is usually, or the arrogance usually manifests itself because the person knows that their life uh, has been evident of, of, of you know, having bad behaviors. And, and so, and they know, you know, in a moment of challenge, their bad behaviors, come on, uh, we become insecure because we know that there's been bad behavior. We become, and, and, and there's, uh, again, this ignorance or lack of knowledge, as it were, about how to address the issue. Well, the way to change that is to abolish the bad behavior. Stop, right? I got a lot of scriptures for that, but I'll just give you one. The Bible says in, in Job chapter 17, verse 9, Job chapter 17, verse 9, it says, The righteous keep moving forward, and those with clean hands become stronger and stronger. Abolish the bad behavior. The righteous keep moving forward. Understand, breaking the cycle is also about acknowledging the fact that mistakes have been made. Please understand that confidence does not always equal perfection. Whenever you attempt to do anything, you're going to make a mistake. Amen. 
And when you realize, come on, that I'm making the kind of mistake that if I don't change this behavior, um, I'm only going to see the same result over and over again. Um, I'm never going to, to uh, reach up to the standard. I'm never going to uh, reach my goal. I'm never going to get accomplished what I hope. Well, you're going to have to change some things. You're going to have to break that cycle and keep moving forward. All right? The righteous keep moving forward. Amen. So if that's the case, what, what the text is implying, the unrighteous, they just stay stuck. Amen. They stay stuck. Amen. And 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 let me let me tell you something. A person who's stuck still, as it were, stationary in place over a long period of time. You know how it is physiologically. You know um, your mobility um, and your muscles become atrophied. You know you you lose your ability to go forward. You become weaker and weaker. But the righteous keep moving forward. I'm talking to somebody tonight. I want to tell you about this now. You got to keep going forward. Amen. Anything. Amen. If you let it, will will. Uh, will give you a reason to give up. But you got to keep moving forward. Amen. Don't stop now. Amen. Listen, the Lord didn't bring you this far to leave you where you are, but you have to make up your mind. Okay, I, I see where I am. You know what? I can beat myself up, beat everybody else up about where I am and how I got here, or I can keep moving forward. I can break that cycle. Come on. Amen. Because there's something that's ahead of me. Amen. I'm reaching out and forward to those things that are in front of me. Amen. I have a present challenge and I have to adjust. Amen. To what is in front of me. Amen. I can't allow my past or the, my, the bad past to restrict me. Amen. I've got, listen, I can't keep telling myself uh, all this negative stuff. I can't, uh, you know, just uh, for appearance sake, you know, uh, display arrogance when really what I'm suffering with is insecurity and ignorance. No, what I got to do is abolish the bad behavior and keep it moving. The righteous keep moving forward. Amen. Amen. All right. ABCs, I'm done. Acknowledge your past influences. You got to break the cycle. And then thirdly, you have to commit to change. Commit to change. Got three things I want to give you there and then give you a couple of scriptures and we're gone. Now, first of all, committing to change is going to require education. You got to educate yourself. You know, a lot of people don't have confidence in an area because they're uneducated in that area. All right. You know, again, ignorance. They don't know. All right. So, well, okay, not knowing <clears throat> does not have to be uh, a handicap that you're forced to live with for the rest of your life. Educate yourself. Research. Amen. Whatever it is, whatever the goal is, whatever your enterprise is, whatever it is you're pursuing, whatever it is you're trying, amen, educate yourself on that issue. Amen. Learn all that you can about it. Amen. Knowledge is power. The more knowledge you have, amen, the more confidence you can become. All right? Let me say that one more time. You don't have to be ignorant. Amen. Amen. I, listen, uh, the Bible says uh, that, that, that the people perish because of a lack of knowledge. Educate yourself. Learn as much as you can. I want to say a little word about that as, as, a, as a sidebar. I talked about this in preaching or teaching some other time. I think it was preaching um, about how you got to be careful now. <clears throat> you really have to be very intentional, very strategic about how you educate yourself. Now, don't, don't, don't let social media be your, your, your educator, your instructor. Let me try that one more time. All right, social media should not be the mode by which you educate yourself. Okay, that makes sense. Let me try it once and ever again. Social media should not be the tool that you use to educate yourself. All right, I want to stress that. There are other opportunities, I mean, you know, and ways for you to educate yourself on any issue. Um, and so don't use social media because you're going to be misinformed. You're going to be miseducated. And, um, so, uh, so, and you, as you make a commitment to change, <clears throat> um, you might go from bad to worse. So when I say that, cause you may not, you may not be afforded opportunity, um, to receive formal education as it were from some institution, but there are avenues, uh, available, um, in the media, just not social media. Um, and on the internet that you can avail yourself to educate yourself. All right? So that's the first thing. So there's got to be education, but there's got to be preparation or training. Amen. Commit to training yourself. 
build confidence. Anybody who goes to the gym or anywhere like that, work out. Nobody, I, I'll give you an example. I started playing golf, uh, and I don't play that well now. It all depends on what day it is. Um, when I first started playing golf, um, I was, you know, I went with a couple of guys, and uh, I was so intimidated. I mean, it was beautiful on a golf. I'd never been on a golf club. I was so intimidated. And I kept asking a lot of questions. And they were like, because I wanted to learn. And they were, they said, listen, just play. Just get out here and play. It's going to come. And as you go along, we'll show you. Um, but I didn't want to do that. I, I wanted to learn everything and then go to the course. Well, my point is, is that there's, there's, there's a time for education, but there's also a time for preparation and training, all right? Prepare yourself so that you can perform at your best. It builds your confidence. When you know you're prepared, let me tell you something. When you know that you're prepared, your confidence is higher than when you know you're unprepared. All right. Let me tell you another way. You've taken a test at school, come on. And if you were unprepared uh, for the test, didn't study, and, uh, and you know, the, the, the teacher was passing the test papers out, and you was getting ready to take the test, you approached that test with a lack of confidence because you know good and well, I don't even probably ain't gonna know nothing on here, on this piece of paper. But if you studied and studied hard, studied well, when you come to the test, you have confidence. Come on, because you have prepared yourself, all right? That's what you have to do. You have to educate yourself, prepare yourself. Even with, like I said, I, I was mentioning again about uh, working out in the gym, uh, that kind of thing. Don't expect don't say I'm committed to change or getting stronger or uh, building my core, as it, as it were, or whatever the case may be, losing weight. That don't Listen, don't talk about that if you're not willing to do and put in the time to prepare yourself, right? Whether it's going to the gym or it's changing your diet, whatever the case may be. All you're doing is talking, and, uh, and I'm testifying. All you're doing is talking. Ain't nothing going to change until you prepare yourself to change, all right? Number three. Number one, let me go back. Education, preparation, then it's implementation. You have to learn how to implement it, all right? At some point, you know, you can't sit around and talk about what, what we's going to do. At some point, you got to bust a move. You got to do something. You have to implement it. You got to go head on and do whatever it is that you're called to do, all right? And do it with confidence. Um, so you build the confidence, but sometimes, sometimes you're confident. Let me say it, not sometimes. But your confidence is also built through implementation. All right? Amen. You know, there's no substitute for experience. I mean, doing a thing, I've already prepared myself to do it. Now I'm doing it, and the more I do it, the more confident I become. I may make mistakes. That's okay. Well, I see a mistake. I'm breaking the cycle, and I'm going to keep moving forward. Amen. I know I've educated myself as much as I possibly could before implementation, but while I'm I'm implementing, I'm going to continue to educate myself. While I'm implementing, I'm going to continue to make sure that I am prepared so that I can continue to build confidence. Turn to Proverbs chapter 9, verse 9, if you don't mind. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 9. It says, give instruction. And I might be wrong on that, but I think it's Proverbs 9 and 9. But anyway, it says, give instruction to a wise man, and he will still be wiser. Teach a righteous man, and he will increase in learning. Do you see that? Commit to change. It's ongoing. Amen. It, 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 has, to, it has to become a system, as it were. It has to become a way of life. All right? Always looking to educate yourself. Always looking to prepare yourself so that you can implement. Amen. With confidence. We can face the future with confidence. Amen. It's just sometimes we're going to have to build it. Amen. Can't nobody hand off confidence to you. You got to build it. All right. James chapter 1, verse 12. It says, Blessed is the man, and I'll paraphrase, uh, and woman who remains steadfast under trial. For when they have stood the test, they will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Commit to it. Commit to it. Amen. It's not going to be easy all the time, but you build confidence. Amen. Confidence for the crisis. This is what the three Hebrew boys had. Amen. When they were thrown to the fiery furnace. You can say what you want to, but they went in there with confidence. Isn't that something? 
They faced the challenge. They dealt with the crisis. They dealt with it confidently. Amen. And, and But you got to remain steadfast. You can't give up when it gets tight, when it gets hard. Oh, God, help me. Amen. I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you what I know. There, there are times, I'm telling you, um, we all have those moments. And the devil, boy, I'm just, he's so quick. He's so quick. He'll jump on you with both hands and feet. When you're having an experience of moments of vulnerability and uh, try to pull you down into a place of depression, make you think you can't. Don't you give in to that. You can do all things to the Lord who gives you strength. All right? You can do it all. Don't you worry about it. Amen. Amen. Sometimes, and this is the, I guess the biggest takeaway is, because if it has to do with past experience or what have you, the big takeaway to, uh, tonight is that you gotta, you gotta, you got to check your connections, the things you're connected to, the system you're connected to, the people you're connected to, you got to check your connections. Amen. Because the company you keep, and I don't mean just mean uh, personal, physical company, but the company you keep, whatever you are connected to, the system that you're in, amen, has the potential to either be a blessing to you or be a barrier to you. And so I'm saying to you, if it's a barrier, you're going to change that. Amen. Because it's, 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 it's keeping you from building the confidence that you need. Amen. Going forward. Child of God, the future may be tough, but the future is still bright. Amen. I remain hopeful for the people of God. Amen. And I, re I remain hopeful for you. Amen. That you will continue to face the future with confidence and know, amen, that you can do all things through Christ who will give you the strength, give you the ability. God bless you tonight. I pray that the lesson has been uh, useful to you that you will take it in. It's just a little piece. We'll come back next Monday, should the Lord say the same, and we'll add a little more to it before we take it back. Listen, you have a great night, and we'll see you later on in the week.